Hello guys, what's going on? My name is Sam, or Chaotic, and welcome back to another GTA 5 video here on my channel. Now in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing the all-new Dinka Jester Classic, which as I'm making this video, hasn't been released yet in GTA Online, but it will be released very, very soon. I believe it will be next week on Tuesday, May 22nd, and it will of course be released alongside two other cars at the same time, those being the Rune Chiburuk, which is a Lada, and the Michelle GT. But until then, I want to showcase this car and discuss 10 things with you guys you need to know about it before it's released and before you buy it in GTA Online. So, let's go ahead and get straight into things. So, the Dinka Jester Classic, of course, is based upon the Toyota Supra in real life. And I'm pretty sure this is one of the most desired and requested vehicles in GTA Online by the community. I have seen so many videos forum posts and comments on YouTube and various social media over the years, it's unbelievable how many people really want to see this in GTA Online. And at last, with this update, Rockstar are releasing it in GTA Online. But annoyingly, Rockstar have made this one of the last vehicles to be released with this update. They are really holding out on us with the release of this car. But like I said, it should be releasing next week on Tuesday, May 22nd. And once it is released, it will be available to purchase from the Legendary Motorsports website for the price of $790,000. Which, yes, is quite a bit of money in-game, but nowadays $790,000 is a reasonable price for a DLC vehicle. In fact, I'm kind of surprised Rockstar aren't charging more money for this car, especially seeing how requested and demanded it has been over the years by the community. I'm pretty sure, especially for those players who really want this car in GTA Online, they'd happily pay two or three times the amount Rockstar are asking. But then again, let's not encourage Rockstar to do that. Anyway, so moving on to the customization options then available for this vehicle. And as to be expected, there are a decent level of customization options, but if I'm honest, again, I am a little disappointed with the fact that this car probably should have been a Benny's original Motorworks vehicle. In real life, as I'm sure you guys know, this is a very popular car to modify and upgrade and although yes there are a few things you can do to this like you just saw I upgraded the front bumper and went with an exposed grille or an exposed intercooler look you can also fit a rear diffuser as well if you want to and completely change out that rear bumper for a carbon one as well if you want to and you can also fit a roll cage to this as well changing out the seats as well if you want to which is what I did I went for the race seats with the secondary cage and of course changed the secondary color later on this car also has an exhaust upgrade option, but as you guys can see, the only real options allow you to change the color of the exhausts. You can't really change them all that much, which again, I was a bit disappointed about. Moving on though to the hoods category. Now in fairness, there are some pretty nice options in this category with the scooped hood and the vented hood being my two favorite options. I think in the end, I went for the scooped hood, but as you can see, if you guys are into this sort of thing, there are also the carbon variants of those as well. So after selecting the scooped hood, of course, I upgraded the headlights to the Xenons, and I have some more information about those headlights later on to share with you guys. But then as for respraying this car, now in fairness, in my opinion, this car looks great in a range of different colors. I like pretty much anything that's bright on this, and in the end, I think I went for a bright orange, or just a standard orange metallic color, which I thought looked really nice. I did that both on the primary and secondary. The secondary color, by the way, changes the color of the roll cage if you did go for the secondary roll cage like myself and the wing mirrors as well. Annoyingly though, you cannot change the color of the seats if you change those out like I did earlier on. They are stuck as red, which is again kind of annoying, but there we go. And you can also change the trim color as well, but as you can see, it doesn't really change it all that much, but instead just overlays the black color, which again just looks awful and is another annoying feature with this car. Anyway, moving on though to the next upgrade option, this being roof, and as you can see, you have the option of fitting a roof scoop, either the primary, secondary, or a carbon version of that. I went for the primary version. You can also fit skirts as well, which I also did. And then in the spoilers category, as you can see, there are quite a few options. I believe there's 10 in total, with quite a few really nice ones in my opinion. I was kind of stuck on to which one to go for. I ended up going for the carbon wide wing, but there were just loads in there, which I was sort of in between. Anyway, but after that, all the other upgrades are standard things, the suspension, the transmission, the turbo upgrades, and the wheels as well. But as I was talking about before, this car, as you've just seen, it does have a few customization options, various things you can do to this, but I still feel like this car should have been a Benny's original Motorworks vehicle. 
Especially seeing that it's a Toyota Supra. In real life, like I said before, it is known to be one of those very customizable and often modified vehicles. Why Rockstar didn't make this a Benny's car, I don't really know. But it really feels like Rockstar are really neglecting Benny's original motorworks. We haven't received a Benny's vehicle since January of last year, so for whatever reason, Rockstar have chosen to completely scrap that custom shop, which is a shame. This car should have had a lot more in the terms of customization. So again, it's just something else which is very disappointing about this car. The car we've wanted to see for so long now in GTK Online. And it's taken Rockstar almost five years to finally add it in game. Now there's something else I want to point out in this video that just goes to show that Rockstar clearly didn't spend much time or effort when making this car. Now taking a look at the front headlights, it's quite hard to see in this gameplay, but basically one of the headlights doesn't have the headlight glass. I think it's this one right here that I'm shooting at right now. There's no headlight glass on this one, whereas the other one does. You might be able to see the reflection in the gameplay. Like I said, it's pretty difficult to see, but can someone please help me explain how Rockstar somehow forgot to copy and paste and revert the headlight glass and put it on the other side. Rockstar did the exact same thing with the Flash GT as well, so it just feels like Rockstar rushed the development process when making this car. And again, further evidence of this besides the missing headlight and the lack of customization is the lack of detailing as well. Just take a look at the rear lights. These aren't even real lights, it's just a sticker. It really feels like Rockstar just couldn't be bothered with this vehicle and just quickly made this as fast as they could and didn't really spend much time when it came to detailing and stuff like that. And there's been so many forum posts about this over the past few weeks. So many people are just outraged by the fact that we've been waiting for this car for so long and the amount of detail Rockstar put into this is very minimal. In fact, those are so basic rear lights that you can't even shoot them out. Like I said, it's just a sticker or a stuck on texture. And this car, just like the Overflot Tyrant the Rockstar recently released, has what I think is a bug with the rear lights as well. So when you go and tint the windows of the vehicle, it also tints the rear lights as well, which is a cool feature, but I'm pretty sure is not intentional, like on the Overflot Tyrant. Although we'd love to have this as an official feature in game, again, I'm pretty sure it's down to Rockstar rushing the creation of this vehicle, and I'm sure when Rockstar releases the next update, they will remove this from the game. But until then, if you guys want to, tint your windows, and it will tint the rear lights as well. Anyway, but putting all that aside for a moment, let's take a look now at this car's performance. Now, the Toyota Supra can achieve a top speed in-game of 119 miles an hour in a straight line and on the flat. Which, for a sports classic, which is the category this car is in, is pretty good. In fact, the highest top speed of any sports classic is just 120 miles an hour, achieved by the Turismo Classic. So how does the Dinka Jessa Classic then compare to the fastest car in the category, the Turismo Classic, both in a straight line drag race and around a track? So let's start things off first of all with a straight line drag race down at the airport, of course running from one side to the other, and using a fully customized and upgraded Dinka Jessa Classic first of all. Now this achieves a time of 23.01 seconds from one side to the other, and hits a top speed of 116 miles an hour during this drag race, so just three shorts of its overall top speed. But then as for the Turismo Classic, again this is fully customized and upgraded, you may expect this to be a bit faster, if not a lot faster, with this being an old supercar back in its day, whereas obviously the Toyota Supra was just a fairly basic sports car, but the results are pretty surprising, both in a straight line and around a track as well. This achieves a time of 23.12, so a little slower in a straight line, but only hits a top speed of 112. Then around the track, again, first we'll take a look at the fully customized and upgraded Jester Classic. Now, as always, I'll be using this area at the dock, driving around the track that I always use, and I want to point out as well that in no way, shape, or form am I a professional race driver in GTA 5. I'm sure there are much better ways of driving, certain race lines and stuff that I'm missing, but nevertheless, as an average driver, just showing you guys the sort of lap times you can expect from these vehicles and the difference between the Jesta Classic and the Turismo Classic. Well, this achieves a time of 36 seconds, 0.22. And one thing I want to point out as we drive around now with the Turismo Classic, in fairness, I'll give it to the Jester Classic. It is a very good car around a track. It handles well, and it's just very easy to control as well. I was expecting it to be one of those cars that was easy to drift and quite difficult to drive around the track, but it's completely the opposite. 
Now, as for the Turismo Classic, now, of course, like I said before, this is the best car in the category at the moment that's available online, both in a straight line and around a track in the Sports Classics category. So, again, with this being an X supercar back in its day, you'd expect this to beat the Toyota Supra by a mile. But, in fact, it was slower, not by a huge amount. Its lap time was 37 seconds exactly. So, again, certainly very close to the Toyota Supra. And, as I pointed out, I'm sure there could have been some improvement on both sides with both vehicles if I was a professional driver in game but nevertheless the point being that these two cars are very very similar with the Toyota Supra being that little bit better around a track and in a straight line drag race situation. So there we go. To conclude then, although the Jetta Classic in my opinion is very disappointing in the terms of the car itself, it should be a lot more customizable. It should have a lot more attention to detail as well, especially with it being the car that it is and so desired with so many players over the years requesting this in GTA Online. It does feel like Rockstar have really just put this together in five minutes and have not put in the amount of time they should have on this one. But in the terms of its performance, this car is very, very good. And by the looks of things, is now the best car that we have in GTA Online in the Sports Classics category. So there we go then guys, with that being said then, that is it for this video. I of course want your thoughts and feelings on everything I've discussed in today's video. And if you guys have any other comments as well, and suggestions for improvement on this vehicle, of course let me know in the comments section. If you guys could also drop a like on this video as well, it would of course be greatly appreciated. Let's try and smash a thousand likes for the Toyota Supra finally being released in GTA Online. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do, because I upload all the latest and the greatest Grand Theft Auto 5 content. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.